The prospect of Iran and the bomb is concern number one for Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. His recent U.S. media blitz firmly planted the issue in the U.S. presidential election. Even a new political ad by an American interest group now running in Florida uses this Netanyahu speech as its centerpiece. The fact is that every day that passes, Iran gets closer and closer to nuclear bombs. The world tells Israel, wait, there's still time. And I say, wait for what? Wait until when? The world needs American strength, not apologies. While Netanyahu jabs at the U.S. and the rest of the world for not doing enough to stop Iran from developing a nuclear weapon, Iran complains that the world has allowed Israel's secret nuclear program to go unchecked and unchallenged. Anti-war activists in Israel say their nation is employing a double standard when it comes to nuclear policy and that Israel's refusal to hold disarmament talks with its neighbors is a barrier to peace. We have something that they can't have. Israel is a country that has nuclear weapons and says no to peace initiatives. I think that might seem as threatening to others. Israeli political scientist Gerald Steinberg disagrees. There's no testing. There's nothing there to, to say this is a threat to the other countries in the region. Iran is exactly the opposite. Israel has defined itself as an exception and is recognized around the world as an exception. It is literally a small country surrounded by enemies that could be overrun in a few hours. So what are some of the contrasts between Iran and Israel's nuclear programs? Iran says its program is solely for peaceful purposes and denies trying to create a bomb. Israel will neither confirm nor deny whether it has nuclear weapons. Iran allows inspections by the International Atomic Energy Agency, but has denied the IAEA access to its Parchin military site, where the agency believes Iran is developing nuclear triggers. Israel has never allowed the IAEA to inspect its nuclear facility in the Negev Desert. That facility near a town called Dimona came under suspicion more than 25 years ago when a nuclear technician there leaked photos and inside information to the Sunday Times. That information prompted analysts back then to estimate Israel had already amassed 200 nuclear warheads. Iran has signed the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty, but has been censured for failing to curb its uranium enrichment. Israel, for its part, has refused to sign the treaty. Israel's leaders say one of the most glaring differences between Israel and Iran on the nuclear issue is the language their leaders use. Anyone. We don't call for anyone's annihilation. We don't foster terrorism. We don't threaten to uh, uh, obliterate countries with uh, nuclear weapons, uh, but we are threatened with all these threats. Iran has never threatened nuclear annihilation. In an interview with CNN's Piers Morgan, Iranian President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad gave a measured answer when asked about the threat of a strike by Israel. The response of Iran is quite clear. I don't even need to explain that. Any question and any nation has the right and will indeed defend herself. But this month, the general who heads Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guards Corps took it a step further. He said if Israel attacks Iran, quote, there will be nothing left of Israel. The war of words is creating fear of a regional conflict. In Israel, people are getting their gas masks and learning how to use them, preparing for the worst. Sarah Seidner, CNN, Tel Aviv.